of work, right? But this is a real estate investing class, right? This is how we do it with real estate investing. So okay. can you get the 12K with the LLC team for your thing? Uh, it, you need to, so before I give out any more of that stuff, I'm not a tax and legal professional, consult with your CPA and attorney. This is not any legal advice, right? You need to do your own due diligence on the stuff that I'm talking about. Make sure we get that on the right? <laughs> way, way in the beginning of the video here, James. Right? We're, we're cut it in. <laughs> so, you need to speak to those professionals, but you, every LLC is taxed differently. It depends, it depends on a lot of different factors. Who's, who's involved in the LLC and all that kind of stuff. I would use an escort personally, myself. Right? Then not only would I pay the kids, but I also have salary dividend splits, and then on top of that you have salary. Right? So it's a whole different ball game. So you guys need to learn about that stuff. Okay? So now this is all this is like a hundred on a hundred thousand dollars, that's how you break it down a year, right? Most people pay thirty to forty percent of this. Right? You need to bring you need to bring it down to ten percent in taxes. Okay? Now you actually you got, you got an extra fifteen twenty thousand dollars a year to your life just by having a different structure. Is that a, is that an okay way to make more money? Just by structuring yourself different. I'm not even talking about anything about real estate. Okay, no. So now how how do now that we got all that kind of stuff handled? How do we make money? How do we find houses? How do we find motivated sellers? People that, that need to sell their house quickly. Um, you can go to the, municip the municipal um, building and I guess get the listing. Public records? Public records. Um, drive by. Public um, records? Uh, you said foreclosure? People have tax liens on their Tax liens? Drive for dollars so you can see find homes like in the streets. Probate courts. Alright, so we'll just be probate here, right? Probate right now. Okay. Anything else? Estate. What's that? Estates. Estates. Probates. Okay. Divorce. Divorce. What else? Craigslist. Craigslist? <laughs> yeah. For sale by owner. For sale by owner. What else? Relocation. What's that? Relocation, another job. Relocation. What else? Where's my social media expert? Facebook ads. Facebook, yeah. Online, right? Facebook, yeah. Online. 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 Uh, advertising. All right. Is there any any, any other ways? Agents. Yeah. Right, referrals. Real estate owned by the bank or financial <laughs> institution. REOs. REOs. Show us that. How about by agents? Agents, we got that. Might have some money here. Agents, we got that here. Anything else? This is about you guys. Brainstorm. Think about it. Bankruptcy. Bankruptcy. Yes. Sheriff auctions. Auctions. Auction. Auction.com. Yes, auctions. Right. Are there any more ways? Probably um, sales. Anything else? Inherited properties. Inherited properties. Probate. Let's go right here. Probate. All right. So this is the part. So let me, you guys, business. If you're in business, right? If you own a business, how many people own a business? Right. Some of you guys. Now, are there stuff in your business that it just it just sucks to do? Very time consuming. Very time consuming, right? It's like not everything about business is is it's all peaches and cream, right? You're not just making money, right? There's a lot of things you need to do in your business that are going to get you to the money, 
okay? So this right here is what I wish somebody told me from the beginning that I needed to know how to do, right? And this is where, the, this is where in every business process, you are going to need leads, right? You're going to need leads for your business. How you get the leads, that's up to you, right? How you get the leads is up to you and how you feel comfortable and what you feel like, what you feel like doing and putting up with for a long time. Does that make sense? Do you guys get that? Right? How do you put, put that up for a long time? Until you're able to hire somebody to do that for you. Okay? So this is the whole process of being able to find more than sellers. Okay? You have to find people that are going through a situation that they need to sell their property. It's plain and simple. If you're going to go out there speaking to other people that, you know, just call, just going to open houses, uh, speaking to realtors and all those kind of things, people want most money for their property. Okay, we're going to need to consider, we need, we need to, I think the number is between 90, 80 and 90% of people want the most money for their house. Right? So this here is about, <coughs> let's say, 10 to 15% of the people that are facing some sort of situation where they need to sell their property quickly, okay? Now, what most people do is they concentrate on speaking to, to these people and give up on this business because they start speaking to people that are not motivated to sell, that are not, ve that are not very pleasant, right, when you make an offer to them, and they're just wasting your time. Right? So if you, before you start going out there and looking at properties and spending an hour driving there, an hour coming back home, an hour or two doing comms, estimating repairs, only to make an offer and the homeowner tell you, no, that's way too low, right? That's half your day. That's maybe your whole day, right? How many days like that can you afford to spend, right, before you go broke or need not have a business. How many days like that? <laughs> One. <All> right? <laughs> so that's why people that's why people give up on this business. Right here. Because they spent I mean anybody going through that right now? Like this should you know, you guys can be honest, this is a, this is a, this is, there's no judgment here. You know why? Because I went through this. I went through this <coughs> from the beginning. Right? I used to I used to get calls from wholesalers and I'll be all excited, I'll go get a look at the property, do my all the due diligence, and I make an offer, the property was either gone, or it was already, it was way overpriced. I spent so much time wasted and not getting much out of it, okay? All right, luckily I was still working and doing my other stuff, but that, that was the biggest waster. Then I started putting in systems, right? We started doing, uh, finding these people, right, we decided, you know what, we're not going to rely on somebody else bringing us money. Mm -hmm. We need to go out there and be actively finding and talking to these people directly, okay? And that's when the business completely changed, okay? And that's when we started, the, I mean, anybody here sent out mailers or anything like that to somebody before, right? Did you get a call back? Yeah. No, no, there will be. Anybody else? Call back? No. How many did you send? Are you open to discussing that? Yes. Um, I sent a good five thousand. Five thousand and not one callback. Okay, let's help you with that right now. Which one? Which? Who were you talking to? I focused on uh, pre foreclosures. Where here in New Jersey? New yes, York? here in New Jersey. Uh, started in Essex County and then down where I live in Middlesex County. Essex County, Middlesex County. Yes. 5,000 in what period of time? Uh, the time frame, um, last year, I've been trying to do this for about a year. So the whole year you made a total of about 5,000? Well, I gave up after the 5,000 5, okay. mailer. So, now that 5,000, was it, um, how, how long were those leads up? Like, where'd you get those leads from? Um, I bought them. You bought the leads? Yes. Okay. You bought the leads from a, a, what, this source or something like that? This source. Um, prop, uh, prop list. Prop list. Prop list. Yes. So buying a list. Few, a few places. Also Craigslist. Buying list. Okay. 
So I've so with buying this, I've heard so many different like stories about that. I, I can't speak to that because I never bought this. Okay, I've never bought this. I've always went directly to the public records, mm -hmm. right? Got the list myself and did our system that way. So we got the information, we got the list, and then we mailed them. We mailed to those people. We mail uh, and door knock. Door knock to those people. Mail, door knock, and now we're trying. We're starting to call. Okay, mail, door knock, and call. Okay, there's no way I can knock on five thousand dollars, five thousand doors, right? But door knocking is very is very high in efficiency. With mailers, is we send anywhere between three to six mailers per per, per uh, property. Okay. Also, the targeting for pre foreclosures um, in the beginning it was very more for um, helping them, um, uh, giving them a free consultation type thing instead of. Get, and now we're doing more of a we buy houses for you kind of thing directly. Okay, but it's more of a numbers game, three to six mailers. Okay, uh, our business right now uh, we are doing about a thousand. Uh, 1,000 to 1,200 mailers a month and we speak to about 10 to 12 people 10 to 12 people per month okay that's and that's huh that's good right? that's great yeah, yeah. that's great that's one to two to people every week that we're speaking to right on a on the high end on the the market when it was like spring summer right it was more like uh, double that right so now think about that right one property for us is anywhere between 30 to 50 K per transaction okay uh, some short sales some short sales take are really really good the best success that I've had with short sales is holding uh, mailers and door knocking for pre foreclosures right and we've gotten those transactions um, we just purchased one in, we just sold one in September. Uh, we started that process last year in October. Uh, we purchased it for 50, 47,000. We sold it for 180, mm -hmm. right? And we didn't, we only put about five grand into that property, right? So we borrowed 70,000 from a private lender. Um, we bought it with their money, we sold it. We made over $100,000 profit on that deal in, about 45, 60 days from the time we purchased that house. Okay, those deals are not are not common. Okay, they happen when you're out there, right? So you, in order to be, I, I always tell people, you, you, you want to get lucky with those transactions, you got to be out there in the field, right? You got to be in the game to get lucky. Okay, the what's one transaction, right? So with this, it's not what you do is your strategy. It's your strategy and your tactics behind what you do with this is going to uh, determine your success, right? It's gonna determine your success. Now, with that in mind, okay? Mailing, door knocking, and cold calling are the ways to contact these people, right? How many people are okay with door knocking? Right, cold calling, mailing, <laughs> right? There you go, right? Whatever, whatever, whatever you're comfortable with, that's what you need to stick to, and you need to, number one, you need to commit to it, master it, and be able to have some sort of marketing budget for it. And consistent. Right? That's what this business is all about. Right? That's what this business is all about. So the. You have to learn, number one, how to put these leads together, right? And how to go about the and handling, getting those people to start calling you, okay? This particular deal is an inherited property, okay? There was a, this was a probate deal. Mm -hmm. So we went down to the courthouse, we got down, we got the probate information, we sent them a postcard, she gave us a call, right? And I believe it was between the time she, we got the lead to the time that we got on the contract, it was less than 30 days or like 45 days, right? 
that can happen very quick. All right. Now, not everyone that calls me is that motivated to sell, right? Because in this business, I get, I, I, as you get and my Instagram, I post all the time about all the letters and all the messages that I get of people cursing me out, <laughs> right? Anybody had dealt with that before? Yeah, right. People being nasty, right? But these, but those are the are these people, right? There's different kinds of people that you're gonna be dealing with. They're the we call them the rotten apples, mm. right? The rotten apples, right? You don't want to waste your time with them, all right? You don't. You can't let those people determine your motivation and your willingness to continue to do this business, right? Because what you need to you need to know this formula right here, right? That there are less people motivated to sell than there are people um, that want to sell. So as long as you continue to go on and plug on. Do you want to talk to people that are motivated, right? And people that are on the fence. People that are just nasty, you just want to disregard those people and continue on your business, right? Because I get, I get, I get them a lot because we send a lot of messages. So, any questions on this? This is your chance, right? Any questions on this, right? Uh, what kind of systems did you put in place? You said you started from public records and you put some systems in place. What exactly is that? So right now we have virtual assistants that do all this for us, right? That Does he or she just scrolls the public records and put a Excel spreadsheet in it there and then somebody else uh, is just uh, sending the mails or can you just so explain? So that's exactly right. Okay. What do yeah. you look for in the public records? So we look for pre-proposures and we look for probates. That's what we look for right now. Only two things? Two. Okay, why did you choose only two? Why didn't you attach tax liens, for example? Because, um, so tax liens, we could, have we could do that, um, but we haven't figured that system out yet. Mm -hmm. So I like to do the things that I'm comfortable, comfortable, that I know, right. or that I've dedicated my time to, and experimented with, and continue that system. Now that we have these two systems kind of on autopilot, now we're, we're going more to like here. Right? And like SEO stuff. We're going more, we're going more there in 2020. What does SEO stand Search engine optimization. Like being ranked on Google and things like that. Okay. So we're doing more of this in 2020. Um, now that we have these systems in place for virtual assistants to help us get those leads, right? So I mean, for these thousand to twelve to twelve hundred leads that we get a month, maybe we spend maybe about five hours, five or six hours a month on doing that. Okay, for somebody that's doing this right now, it takes that's a full time job. That's twenty twenty five hours a week minimum. Is that person sends uh, emails or regular mails? Direct mail. Direct mail. Regular mail. Regular mail. Okay. Yeah, regular mail. Okay. Right. So we send postcards. What kind of system do you have for postcards? Do you print them, or does he has to do something? No, or no. Or it's an online. It's an online writing. company that we use. Mm -hmm. Right. So we use Renata's iOS. Right. Renata's iOS. Uh, we also use another one called Deal Machine. Deal Machine. Deal machine for driving for dollars. All right. So this, these are the two systems that we use. Okay. Any questions? Any other questions? You had a question. How many virtual assistants do you have? Four. Four. Okay. How did you find them and train them? So my business partner, who's not here, he's in Australia right now. Um, he handles. He's handled that part of training them and finding them. Okay, but we spend a lot of time on. He spent a lot of time working on that. So we spent a lot of time creating those systems to be able to train them. Training, uh, training is creating um, manual for everything that you have in your mind. Right. So do you have a, just a script for them and manuals? We you have. Use them? Yeah. We have a process for every single thing that we want them to do. Videos, everything, questions, and 
the right question that they can ask. Is there all the virtual questions. assistant locally? No, or they, or okay. they are in the uh, Philippines. But they can do the public record online? Online. Okay. Yeah, the only, the only ones that they can do is online. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Jose, when they make uh, schedule appointments, is it you and just your team that actually go to so the property? Or do you vet more and only go to where you're certain? pretty certain that you're going to get that deal. So the way our system works right now is I get the calls uh, and I handle the fee and I handle those calls. Okay. Uh, once I determine those properties, I determine the motivation of the homeowner, I go and see the property myself. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what, that's what we're going to next mm -hmm. right now. I go into the property and see it myself. So prior, prior to you having virtual assistance, how long were you doing this? So this was yourself? a full-time job. This was a full-time job. Like it's it taking me between 20, 25 hours. Mm -hmm. So and before doing this, right, I would go to the public record. I would take down the lead. I'll do my research. I'll print out the letters. I put them on envelopes. I handwrite. I mean, all the stuff that you guys don't already know and I've been I've been taught to do, mm -hmm. right? I did. I do that. I put stamps, handwrite the letters, and send them out on a monthly basis. And this happened like that, and I got my first deal because I was consistent with that. Right? We did it for months. Right? Actually, we did it for like a whole year like that. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Yeah, that's not something. You got listen. This business, business is business. Right. Like if you want to succeed, you got to do what your business needs to succeed. Mm -hmm. If you don't have a lot of money, then you need to figure out how you're going to be able to do it. How much time did you dedicate a week to that? Twenty twenty five hours. Uh -uh. Um. So you said that your virtual assistants they to get all the public records. What happens when there's some courthouses or areas that you have to go in to get the records? So we, I do it. Mm -hmm. I personally do that. Yeah, because I personally go to, to like these these records right now to do that. We're still I really we're really gonna be changing that um, in the future, but right now I'm still doing that because I like to be in the field. And which market you are targeting? Uh, Essex, Hudson, uh, Union, Bergen, Passaic. Mm -hmm. So within a two hours drive, right? No, uh, half an hour. Oh, half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Mm -hmm. uh, you had a question. Um, she asked it. Oh, so. you got. You're good. Any uh, anything else, Rich? You said you said ten to twelve people you actually call or knock on doors. No, that actually return. You get we get a call back from. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this November and December have been really slow with that. Um, mm -hmm. but we still got this deal. We still got the closes in December. Uh, we got actually a call during Christmas Day. So how is this a deal? How is this a deal? That's what we're going into next, determining that. So this, everything I just covered was how I found this person, right? right? So this person was an inherited property. She inherited the house. She was in the probate system. We found her. We sent her. We sent her a mailer, right? Um, this, uh, this, this cost is fifty cents to send this person that matter. Now, we don't spend 50 cents, right, on our marketing. We spend about 1000 to $1,200 a month on this. But, like, if you think about it, this one pro this one person, it was just 50 cents for this person to get to give us a call. Mm -hmm. Now, which person are you gonna call you? That's on you, right? You gotta figure that out. That's Who made the you pick this property to send a mail it to? Because it was, it was part of my list, it's part of my system. Right. It's part of my system, right? I dedicate on probate and I dedicate on foreclosure. So I find those people and I market to them. So there was a couple that you sent out. It wasn't just this yes, one. Yes, every week we send several in different counties. Did the seller have a price set price? She did. She her price was one forty. She wanted one forty or one fifty for this house. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you paid. We paid one twenty five. So are we done with this this side? So we're gonna we're gonna. Sounds like we're moving on to the next part. Mm -hmm. Any yeah, last question? question? So how much time did you, t did you take it to put all the systems in place? Like six months, a year? A year. A year. Mm -hmm. One year. Last year, the, what, this 2019, um, mm -hmm. my business partner, God bless him, he, just, he put all that together with the virtual assistant and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Right? So, real estate investing, right? This product. A little plug about that, right? Systems. He's in Australia. This biz this property is still running. By the time he comes back, this property is going to be most likely already ready to get listed on the market, right? He don't have to be worrying about this house while he's in Australia enjoying his time. Exactly. 
right? Business, that's systems, right? One, uh, one of our second or third transaction, I went on my family vacation last year uh, with my with, uh, wife and kids, um, January 2018, I believe. We were out there in Colombia and we got an $80,000 check, right, during, during the time I was away, right, closing. We sold one of our houses, or oh, two years ago, right, sold one of our properties, okay? I didn't have to be in the closing. I didn't have to do any, any other stuff that you have to run around to do that, but there was still money waiting for me when I came back. Mm -hmm. It was like, okay, vacation. Right, it's this business, right, it provides that freedom, but you have to be able to do it right. Okay, so, now that we found a deal, right, we start to determine um, good deal, right? Determine if it's a good deal. So th when I first came in, she was a very nice lady. Uh, we spoke, she wanted about 145. She told me she wanted 145, 150 for this transaction. She told me that this property needed 30K in repairs. Okay, when I, before I came to this house, I knew that this house was gonna be worth anywhere between around two, uh, 220 to 230. Okay, that with these numbers, is that a good deal? Yes. No way. It's not a good deal. No. With her number? With her numbers. No, no. That's not a good deal. No. Right? Remember? The, yeah, the, all the stuff the that we talked about in the beginning? Yeah, minus the whole yeah, thing. Exactly. Not a good deal. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, but I, I still know that just because they tell me that's what they want, mm -hmm. that don't mean that that's what they're going to set. Mm -hmm. Right? And I'm in the business of going out there to verify all these things. So I came. We spoke with met with the homeowner. Now you guys did the exercise, right? Mm -hmm. Quick, qu quickly, just tell me how many, how much money does it going to cost to repair this house? Mm -hmm. Depends on what you're going to add in it. Depends. 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 This is your business. We, this is the numbers. How much do we need? We purchased one twenty-five, right? We purchased at a one twenty-five, and we can our after repair value is two twenty-five. Maybe and I'm already helping you guys oh, with this. I'm already helping you guys with this number. Hmm. Hmm? Fifty thousand. Maybe thousand dollars. Thirty thousand dollars to fix. Okay, thirty and fifty. Just repairs or like all the other costs? Just repairs, just to fix the house. Oh, yeah. Is there an oil tank in the basement? No. no, no oil tank. Anything else? Same oil fifty. Fifty. Well, like I said, it depends because you still got the electric, you got the heat, the plumbing, all of the other stuff to include too, not including the outside. So yeah, that depends. 60. 65. Okay. So just pretend that this is your business. Pretend, pretend this is your business. What is what is the unknowns? We don't know. So you gotta leave some until you start behind the wall. Whatever. There's unknowns. Maybe 30 with 20 of unknowns. 30 and 20 of unknowns? That's a lot of unknowns. <laughs> <laughs> Just giving yourself a cushion. Sure. <laughs> That's a lot of unknowns. Right? Um, so just, what's that? What's that? Termite, mold, that Termite unknown. mold, unknown. Unknowns. How long was it uh, vacant? On the this was maybe like vacant a couple of months. Okay. Unknowns. Okay. So let's talk about let's talk about unknowns real quick. Okay? Let's talk about unknowns real quick. Because this is a big part of this, right? Mm -hmm. What are the unknowns that you need to know? Mm -hmm. You said termites, right? Termites? Mold. Electrical. Yeah, electrical. Yeah, yeah. Any asbestos and mold? Structure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Rodents. What is it? Rodents. Rodents? Can't have those. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what else? Any other unknowns that you need to know about a house before you buy it? Flames. Flames. <laughs> Can't forget that. Yeah. Leans. What else? 
Violations. Violations. Taxes. Yeah. Tax, yeah. Yeah. Taxes. Yeah. I know somebody asked about it before. Or the tank. Mm -hmm. Anything else? But those are, you would know that though, but while well, I'm thinking of Extra like square footage, like if you want to renovate the basement, that they don't, that's not Like to add that extra living space? Yeah. Anything else? Any open permits? Open permits. Oh, yeah. That's big on no list. <laughs> Just keep getting bigger. <laughs> Anything else? Yeah, the maintenance permits as well. I guess maintenance the permits. We'll leave that on the permits. What else? Maybe crime. I don't know. Crime. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Crime. crime. Neighborhood. Neighborhood. Yeah. Anything else? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> like what location, else? right? Um, location, right? Good. All right. So for me, what I like to do, I go to this, the process, right? That this is bef this is once we have a contract. So I go through this process once I have a contract in place. Okay. Beginners and most people want to have all this answered before they have a contract in place. And that was me. I used to do that all the time. I needed to get all these answered before I can put a contract in place and make my offer because I was gun shy. Right? I was scared to make an offer, scared to put a, to put my money into something that wasn't gonna work out, mm -hmm. right? It's normal, okay, it's normal. We put offers first and then we determine this, okay? Mm -hmm. Ready, shoot, aim. That's what we teach, right? Ready, shoot, aim. You guys went to that workshop? Right? Ready, shoot, aim. Okay? Why? Why do you think I'll do something like that? So you don't want to do that off? Maybe it's a conditional off, like it's based on con certain conditions, and then it can change if there's something wrong. Exactly. Right, exactly. So contracts are there to protect you and protect the seller. Mm -hmm. Right? Here in New Jersey, uh, it's a buyer beware market. It's a buyer beware market. So you buy, and you need to determine this on your own. The seller is not responsible for providing you with this. Okay, You should have attorney, title company, right? But the seller is not responsible for this. And even if you have attorneys and title companies, whatever you have, whose responsibility is it? Yours. It's yours. Yeah. Whose money is it? Yeah. It's your money, right? Whose business is it? It's your yeah. business. So you need to learn these things, right? You need to know these things. The more you know about this, the better your business is going to be. All right. So my our process is once we have an offer accepted, we go through this. We go to the city, right? We go at we go and um, determine this, this. Uh, we do this. We we spend. We do inspection for this. We do inspection for this, right? We go to the city for this, right? Da, 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 da. And that's it. All right, we go to the city for all that stuff. Because the city has everything about with the house has its public records with the city. Right? So the city needs to s provide us with all those information. Now, on top of these permits, we also ask for any closed permits and copies of the of the permits that was done. Because we want to see if there was anything that was added to the build to the building, to the structure or any works that was done, we want to know about it. Okay? All of this stuff is room for negotiations when it comes to the bill, to, to buying the house. Okay, you have 14 day inspection period, and during that time, so we buy all the houses as is. And I tell the homeowners, listen, we buy all the houses as is, but we need to determine what is. Okay, if, if, what, thi if what this is comes with $20,000 in liens, then that's not really what I'm getting. I'm not really just getting the house, right? And then we need to talk about that. So I, I asked him straight up, do you, do you have any liens, anything that you're aware of that you think that this comp probably comes with? Yes or no? And then we determined that everything here is good, right? My business partner 
okay, uh, that helps me determine all this other stuff with the construction. Okay, he goes, once we have a contract, right, it's not worth his time to come here before we have a contract. Because once you have a contract, now we got we use our system. So one of the systems, the systems that we use prior to making the offer is we use a tool called Renata's iOS. Okay, and there we have a um, repair estimator. Okay, we have a repair estimate tool. That software, what it allows me to do is as I'm walking to the property, I plug in the details about the house and at the end of it, it's going to give me a number of what this property is going to be worth or is going to cost to repair. Okay, now this tool is customizable. So what that means is we had our construction crew go into the software and give us a price for square footage for flooring, for things that we use in our business right now. So if we need to replace a window, I count how many windows need to be replaced, I put it in the tool, and it gives me a number. How many sockets we need to replace, we put it in, it gives me a number. If I need to do a kitchen, we don't, I don't, we don't break it down by like uh, every little item in the kitchen, I just break it down. Kitchen, square foot, we're gonna, a low-end kitchen, medium-end, high-end kitchen, and it gives me a, a price range. Okay, then I go into painting. How is the square footage of the house? I put it in. The whole house needs to be painted. It gives me a, uh, gives me a number. Right? You guys get the idea? Mm -hmm. So when I walk to the house, I already have all. I put in all that information, right? And it gives me a number. And I tell the homeowner, look, this is the average of what this property is going to cost me to repair. Now, then I, then I tell the homeowner, I go from there and I, I go into, okay, well now I need to determine what this house is worth in the open market. Okay, I need to know what other houses in the area are selling for. Now, how do you get that information? Because nobody put that here, as you all know. <laughs> comps. Comps, right? Comps. Where do you get comps? Zillow, MLS. Yeah. Red. Right? Redfin, right? Zillow Redfin. Okay. I use MLS. I'm a real estate agent here in New Jersey, and I got that license so I can get access to the MLS. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Information, right? Is your is it's your business. You have to determine what it's going to be for your business, right? I like. I am a person that likes to have control mm -hmm. of, the, of my business, right? So if I can't, if I have to rely on somebody else to give me this information, I don't feel good about that, right? 